Hey friends, Andrew here, hope you're well. You guys seem to quite enjoy the previous iOS 16 settings video, so today I've come up with a list of 14 settings you want to change right away once you upgrade your Mac operating system to Ventura. I've been testing Ventura on the new M2 Air here over the last couple weeks, and Ventura is probably the biggest OS transformation in a long time yet. So the very first Mac OS Ventura setting to change is an important one, and it's making sure that the new rapid security response feature is switched on. To do this, go into system preferences, which by the way is Apple has renamed to system settings and looks a lot more like iOS settings to apparently make things more uniform across their devices. So once you're in settings, click general, and then go into software updates, and then you can see this info icon here, click that. And once it pops up, you're going to scroll all the way down and you'll see this new feature called Install Security Responses and System Files. This one is something you definitely make, want to make sure is enabled because once you've turned it on, you'll get automatic security updates on the go in the background without even requiring a system restart. So while we're managing our security, one of the awesome benefits of Ventura is they've improved the hide my email feature to now include third party apps and not just Apple apps. But that is if they include it in the final version of Ventura, apparently it may not even make it, but I'm hoping it does. And if it does go into system settings again, and then click onto your Apple ID and then go into iCloud. And then from iCloud, scroll down and click hide my email and click options. So once it loads, follow the prompts and then you'll land on this page here. And what it does is, well, it hides your email. You'll still receive the emails, but through a dummy account to protect your identity and privacy because they'll be forwarded by Apple to your actual email address. It's absolutely a feature you want, especially if both Apple and third party apps are supported. The next thing you want to set up is Spotlight because in Ventura, it now features quick look and quick action functions, much like on an iPhone. So to give you an idea, bring up Spotlight with command spacebar. If I type in clock now, we're able to set timers directly from Spotlight. So I want to show you another example too. If I type in dogs, you're going to get uh, images directly from your albums and also from Google and search engines right directly from Spotlight. I find this extremely useful because I use Spotlight all the time, but there are Spotlight settings I like to change immediately though, and that's customizing what it searches for so it performs much faster. And so to do this, go into system settings and then scroll down to Siri and Spotlight. A few things have changed here in this new settings panel, just FYI, and then go down. And here in Spotlight, you can remove or enable certain uh, areas where you want Spotlight to search for or not search for. So I recommend going through these and seeing what's relevant to you and turning off things that aren't relevant just so it's able to search through your Mac much faster. You can also go down to Spotlight Privacy and then switch on and off certain folders or areas where you don't want it to uh, pop up in Spotlight at all. The next new Ventura setting to change is the new ambient sounds feature. I love having white noise play in the background while I work and, you know, wind down. So there's now finally an option to get access to a bunch of nice ambient sounds direct from the Mac OS. I'll show you how to access them and then how to set them up in your control center so you can quickly turn them on. So to set them up in the first place, open the system settings in your Mac again, and then in the sidebar, go down to accessibility and then into audio. And then from here, you can see that you can choose uh, different background sounds. So you can see here there's ocean, dark noise, bright noise, stream. So if we just stick with rain, so you can probably hear that. That's probably a bit loud for my liking. So I'm going to turn it down. And so it's just nice background noise to have on if you choose, if you're doing, you know, work or you're just trying to unwind. And so here's how you can add them into your control center for quick access. Open the system settings in your Mac and then in the sidebar, click control center right here and then go all the way down to, I believe it was hearing. So click he under hearing, click show in control center. 
And then now, once you click your console, control center, you can see down here that you have this ear icon. Click it, and then you got background sounds. Turn it on, and you immediately have access to all these different sounds. The next setting you want to change in Mac OS Ventura when you first upgrade is turning on the featured content in the Photos app. Memories is the feature that I personally really enjoy in iOS Photos where, you know, it'll collate different photos into these memories so we can cherish our, you know, memories. <laughs> Apple really has the naming conventions really tight here. So we now get this feature on the Mac, but we need to turn it on and reset it first. So to do this, go into the Photos album, the Photos app, I should say. So once you're in the Photo app, click the top menu bar, Photos, and then click Settings. And then in Settings, you can see that you can now toggle on Memory Notifications, Featured Content, and Holiday Events. I'm gonna turn them all on. And then it's really important that you reset Suggested Memories just to clean it all up so you can start to get those suggested memories up on your photo app. And this one's a really welcome feature, especially for those who appreciate photography like me. Next up, the appearance of Mac's font book has now been transformed. So if I bring it up, type in font book, you can see that it's now completely transformed. It looks so much better. And not only does it look a whole heap better, you can now see lots of different fonts at a glance and you want to make sure that you can download the free custom fonts available in Fontbook. So to bring up Fontbook, the easiest way was just to search for it in Spotlight. Then inside Fontbook, you can now download additional official fonts for your Mac from Apple for free. All the fonts available for download are grayed out and you can simply click the download icon uh, next to the fonts that you want and then it'll download it automatically. So I highly recommend just scrolling through these and seeing if you like any of these uh, fonts, clicking that download icon and it'll immediately start to download. And then once it's downloaded, you have it available now to use. Totally worth spending a few minutes here and adding more fonts from Apple. Next one is a new Ventura feature, which I think you either like or you dislike, and it is Stage Manager but I think it's worth testing out at the very least. So by default for me, this was turned off and to turn this on, go into system settings and then go into, I believe it was desktop and dock and go scroll down into stage manager. So right here, if I turn this on, okay, you're going to now get, if I uh, minimize this, you're going to get all your uh, apps open on the side here. Again, I think this is worth, if I just put this down here as well, you can see that it sort of like switches uh, around and it'll hide things, it'll come back in. I think this function is pretty nice if you wanna easily switch between apps and windows uh, in this new visual design. I'm not sure if I like it just yet. It is a bit obtrusive, but I definitely got more used to it over the last few weeks. I don't know, let me know if you guys are a fan of this new feature. The next setting is great for those who really enjoy captions like myself. I really enjoy having captions on on Netflix and live captions are now available on macOS Ventura. This feature basically generates captions almost anywhere on screen and it's pretty accurate for my tests as long as there's no major background noise. It even works for live FaceTime calls from friends and family. But for whatever reason, this disappeared in my latest beta update, but it should be here in the final release on Ventura, I believe. So to turn this on, go into system settings, then go down to accessibility again. And then under live captions, it should be here under hearing um, and as live captions. For whatever reason, this has changed to captions for me. Um, and I don't have the live captions option to toggle on now, but it should be here. And you can also change the look of the background uh, and you can adjust it to your liking. And so now when you're on FaceTime calls, it will uh, appear as captions live from the other caller, which is pretty damn awesome. It's also worth turning on the new weather notification in the updated weather app. To do this, go into the new weather app so I'm just going to search for it. And then from here, you can basically go into weather and click settings, and then you can turn on severe weather and next hour precipitation notifications. 
And what this does is send you notifications on where there's severe weather events, when it's snowing, raining and that sort of stuff. Uh, not just one location, but multiple locations of your choice. You can completely customize which notifications are sent to you for which location, as you can see here. But yeah, this is a great one to have on. Moving on to settings that help you organize your life, and that's smart folders. This isn't unique to Ventura, but I think they're so underrated and not enough people use them. So I wanted to show you how to set up smart folders if you haven't yet already. So to do this, all you have to do is bring up a finder window, then click file, then click new smart folder. So under new smart folder, click this plus icon here, and then you're going to add the parameters you want. So for example, if I want to set up all the JPEG photos with a certain name to go into this smart folder, I can do this by click kind is basically image, then it's going to be JPEG. So it'll filter all of that out. And then you're going to click plus again. So we're going to click name is uh, well matches. And then you're going to insert your uh, name here of the specific photos you want to go into that specific smart folder. Highly, highly recommend setting up these and uh, it'll change your life and save you loads of time when they're set up right. On the same topic of folders, if you have space in your iCloud, I think it's totally worth syncing up your important folders to iCloud. This is really easy to do. So go into system settings and then go into your Apple ID, then click iCloud, then scroll down to iCloud Drive and click options. And then from here, choose desktop and document folders. And then it's going to start syncing. That's it. Similar to iOS 16, Apple has introduced the new duplicate photo folder on your Mac. It automatically finds duplicate photos in your library and gives you the choice to delete them or merge them by saving a higher quality photo and disregarding the other. For some reason, upgrading to the Ventura Beta 3, the duplicates folder isn't here for me, but to get to the folder on your own Mac, go into the Photos app and then it should be underneath photos as a option on the side panel. And then what will happen is you'll see all your duplicate photos and you can go through them manually and merge them or delete them. This is pretty useful to save some space right off the bat. Now, the next setting I personally change, and this might be a controversial one. I feel like I needed to add this one here because seriously, I debate this setting with my partner all the time and that's turning off natural trackpad movement to so go into settings and then go into trackpad and then as you can see it looks a little different in ventura but essentially it's still the same thing so if you click scroll and zoom natural scrolling i like to turn this off for me personally um, because if i want to move something to go down i'll scroll you know down not up and natural scrolling just drives me crazy. So I always make sure that this is turned off. I don't know, guys, what do you think? Are you team natural scroll or team unnatural scroll? Let me know down in the comments because this one drives me crazy. The next feature is absolutely awesome for my fellow gamers out there. And it's similar to the new iOS 16 update again. We can now pair our Nintendo controllers to our Macs. And I think that's so cool. So I'll show you right here. I've got my Nintendo Pro controller right here, and this should work with uh, the standard Nintendo Joy-Con controllers too. So to go, go into your uh, Bluetooth settings. So click system settings and go into Bluetooth. So from here, what I'm gonna do is flip this around. Wait, not flip this around. I was thinking about the standard controller. Go on, if you have the Pro controller at the top, you hit the button and hold it down until the light flashes, then immediately you can now see that the nearby devices will recognize the Pro Controller. You couldn't do this in previous Mac OS systems. So click connect, and then once it's connected, bam, right there, we've got it connected. And this is gonna be awesome for uh, games out there. I was just testing it out on Asphalt 9 uh, just before this video. So if I bring it up right here, so as you can see here, it works perfectly with a Nintendo Pro controller. It should be the exact same with your uh, standard Joy-Con controllers. But yeah, it's pretty awesome. I was just testing Asphalt 9, as you can see here before this video. But yeah, it's pretty awesome turning your laptop into a portable casual gaming machine. 
If you made it to the very end of this video, drop the code word comment Mac Vendetta and I'll give it a like. If you found this video useful, drop a like as well and be sure to subscribe for more. Also, if you like the custom wallpaper that you see here, I'll leave a direct link to it down below in the description box. It's been crazy seeing how many people are enjoying it and seeing other people's setups. And I'll also share a video on screen here where I share the must-have Mac apps that I use on the daily. As always, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.